beauty of competitive running is the sheer simplicity of the sporting contest. Athletes put one leg in front of the other over and over and the man or woman who can get from A to B in the shortest time will win the race and take the honours. But since the dawn of racing, athletes have been looking for outside help to gain the edge over their rivals. In today's world, runners and race organisers are increasingly looking to science and technology for ways to enable and enhance performances. But is our development of sports science and technology really helping people to run faster now than in the past? For instance, do the latest running shoes really make any difference? Or have modern race tracks been specially designed for speed? To find answers to my questions, I've come to Sheffield to the Don Valley Athletic Stadium to meet Steve Hake, a professor in sports engineering. I decided to put Steve's running credentials to the test by taking him for a quick jog. Hello, Steve. Uh, yeah, Thanks, I'm sir. not really dressed for this, but anyway, <laughs> let's go for it. So um, I, I'm jogging here. You know, it's fairly easy, but I feel like I'm slipping ever so slightly. I mean, what, what could I do to improve that? Well, if you're a sprinter, of course, uh, you could wear a pair of spikes. Uh, spikes are very hard uh, underneath, and they've got these metal prongs. Uh, they dig into the surface. Now, the surface is rubberized, so those spikes can go in quite nicely. And if you're sprinting on your toes, you can push off really well. Uh, better than I am, I'm a bit of a heel striker, so I tend to break uh, on every uh, contact with the surface. So with those, because I mean, these shoes as well, um, they're not the lightest things in the world. I mean, could I get something a bit lighter than oh, material, maybe? Oh, absolutely, yes. I mean, certainly, you know, uh, running shoes, less than 100 grams. Uh, these are probably uh, 300 grams, these. These are trail shoes, so they're not really suited to this. So you can get some really lightweight shoes, and it has been shown that they really improve performance. When he's not fell running or taking part in other sporting activities, Steve works at the Centre for Sports Engineering Research at Sheffield Hallam University in the UK. This is a specialised centre dedicated to the fundamental study of sport and sporting equipment. It is also a facility for athletes to visit, to learn about the science of their trades and to help them develop their training programmes. Today, the British athlete Dave Scorer has come to the lab for physiology testing. Dave is competing in the European Student Orienteering Championships in Spain at the start of July. The tests are designed to gauge Dave's fitness level. One of the tests that Dave has come in for is a blood lactate test. Lactate is an acid present in muscles at all times, but it is produced in larger quantities when you undertake intense physical activity. As you continue to push your body, you eventually reach a point where lactate starts to be produced exponentially. At this point, you start to experience fatigue, leading to increasing levels of pain. Today, Chef for Hallam scientist Alan Ruddock will build a profile of how Dave's blood lactate levels change as he exercises. The results will help Alan to design a short-term acclimatisation training programme for Dave. Alan has asked Dave to run a series of intense bursts on a treadmill. At the end of each run, Alan takes a sample of Dave's blood to determine the blood lactate levels. Dave also indicates how fatigued he feels after each run. The results are also a good indicator of whether Dave's current training programme is producing the desired effect. I've had this test a few times before in the past, so there's previous data we can look at and compare what my fitness level now is like with what I was a year ago and two years ago, etc. So far it looks to be going in the right direction, I seem to be improving. Uh, based on previous years, so I'm in good shape and looking forward to the races. As well as studying individual athletes, the scientists at the Sheffield Sports Hub are also interested in the long-term trends in sports performances and how they are influenced by science and technology. Back at the stadium, Steve tells me about how track surfaces have changed over the years and how the Jamaican sprinting phenomenon Usain Bolt is defying historic trends and having a dramatic impact on his fellow sprinters. So, I mean, apart from um, shoes, I mean, stadiums themselves, I mean, how have they evolved over the years to, to accommodate athletes? Well, certainly the surface has changed over the years. We used to run on grass, used to run on shale. We're now running on this rubberized surface. And the compression of the surface has been adapted over the years so that you get maximum energy return to uh, the runner. And probably what you'll see at the Olympics, hopefully, is a few world records uh, because the surface is tuned to the athlete. So you think that'll be in um, 
certain events, I mean, if you, if you were to stick your neck out and make a few predictions, <laughs> what, would, what would you say? Well, in terms of predictions, yeah, well, predictions, my predictions for the summer are definitely in the sprinting events. Um, I think the, the field uh, of athletes, including Usain Bolt, is so, so strong that they're all pushing each other up, they're all becoming better, and I think we'll really see some more records there. Could you say there's been some kind of effect, you know, just like his sheer presence, Usain Bolt, does that then kind of lift the whole field to, to really push themselves and perform better? Oh, oh, absolutely. We've done some research looking at performance over the years, over, in fact, over the last 120 years, and we've looked at the top 25 performers in every year going back to 1890. Now, looking at Usain Bolt, since Usain Bolt came along, performances improved by about one to two percent. Now we thought initially that's just because Usain Bolt's so phenomenal. When you put him in the top 25, the average is so much better. But take him away and take the average of the other 24, they've also improved by 1.4, 1.5%. So there's this peer pressure going on, which means that everyone is improving their performance. Now, what's causing that? That could be just the peer pressure on the track. It could be uh, more resources behind the scenes. Um, It could be better training, just more application. There must be a limit when you surely you can't just keep getting faster and faster. Is there something, (laughs) some kind of point where the body just can't go any faster? Uh, Yes, of course. I mean, there is going to be a physiological limit. Uh, But that physiological limit depends upon who turns up, who arrives. So in the middle distance runners, for instance, we've seen an influx of East African runners who are particularly well suited to those distances, partly through application, partly through genetics, partly through the training environment that they come from. So that was a new population that arrived on the scene and performances all around uh, improved. So we'll see that continue for quite some years to come. So from my trip to Sheffield, I've discovered that the art of running is not as basic as it first appears. Modern athletes can use science to ensure they have the best footwear and facilities and to inform their training regimes. But I've also learned that an athlete like Usain Bolt is not simply a product of this science and technology. He is an inspirational anomaly among sprinters. It goes to show that when it comes to breaking world records, people are just as influential as the technology.